I'm smiling because behind me is my brand new PJ 16 foot gooseneck dump trailer. A dump trailer is one of the most useful items a do it yourself guy can have. Uh, for me, I've been renting one or borrowing the neighbors and finally broke down and got one. Of course, I did hours and hours worth of research on the internet and trying to find what was available in my area. I looked at different brands. So we have the Lamar, uh, the PJ, of course, uh, Big Tex. Um, there's another one called Iron Bull and decided upon the PJ. I was prepared to drive whatever it took to find these. They're very difficult to find. They don't stay in stock long. And here in August of 2021, availability has been limited. This one I bought over the internet from a dealership over in Colorado. I'd like to talk about why I bought the PJ what I like about the PJ, my buying experience, buying something sight unseen off the internet, and after doing a walk around and receiving this brand new product, some of the things I did not like about it. So let's get started and have a look at this guy. All right, let's have a closer look at this trailer. This is the PJ DE model. This is 16 foot bed by 83 inches in size. This version has the two 7,000 pound Dexter axles. They're a drop axle. They're an 8 bolt 16 inch tire. They sit on 235 80R 16. And uh, looking at a trailer for me, the running gear is one of the most important things. So let's start on the very bottom and look underneath. Okay, first of all, as advertised, we have these nice heavy 8 inch I beams on either side. That is your main rails. Underneath, you can see all the tubular cross supports. Okay, here's the axles themselves. This is a leaf spring rocker setup, uh, not to be confused with the HD model, which has the torsion axles, which is very desirable. But uh, these have a heavy duty five leaf spring on all four tires. All wheels have brakes. Okay, the wiring is very well protected, it sits inside the I beam on clips. And on the other side, looking across at it, you can see all the running gear. This one has the scissors hoist with a very heavy duty cylinder. I didn't measure the cylinder, but it's quite robust. Okay. Looking towards the front of the trailer, you can see the hydraulic lines. They could have been a little better protected, in my opinion, and the bottom of the toolbox. In the very back, you can see the two heavy-duty sets of ramps. The ramps are quite robust. Everything underneath is powder-coated beautifully. The welds on the bottom look sufficient. And uh, most of the welds look pretty good quality. Let's go around to the nose of the trailer. So starting at the very front, we have a Bulldog trailer hitch, okay, it's fully adjustable, um, safety chains are included, um, it's nice that they did put these uh, little catches in here so you have a place to get the chains out of the way, <clears throat> breakaway is included, it does not have a separate battery like most models, and it actually runs the battery out of the toolbox out of the same battery used for the hydraulic hoist system which I like a lot of the small batteries on the breakaways tend to be hard to maintain expensive to replace and don't last very long <clears throat> on the top we have heavy 10 inch I beams this is beefy stuff as you can see we're gusseted here we're gusseted here and where the gooseneck meets the frame we have this double wall heavy gusseted here really nicely made one of the reasons I targeted this trailer, it looks like they didn't skimp on the materials, okay? Welds are generally good, looking at these welded seams, interior at the cross supports, pretty good quality. As far as the gooseneck itself, well cross supported. Here we have the support with the tube frame with the tire mounted on it. One thing I didn't like is that they just put the two mounts on the tire on the very back. They did not put one forward, so it would have just balanced it. Although it looks solid, no complaints. I'll probably add a bolt here on the front end just to give it a little bit more balance. <sighs> yep, good old USA steel. Nice job, guys. Again, multiple cross supports here. 
I'm not sure why there is uh, post stake holes here on this cross support. I guess it would be handy if you put an upper deck. I have an option I'm going to use them for later. Okay. Looking here at the front toolbox, very large, plenty of room for stuff. It does have a plug and a charger built in. Simply take an extension cord, plug it in, and you're good to go. Height of the box in the front is just about 24 inches. Height in the back is about 27 inches. It's about 11 inches wide. Looking inside, very deep area here. They do include the chains. That is actually for the spreader gate to limit its travel. They give you a rope, and that's actually to add to the, uh, to the cover to uh, pull it out, make it a little bit easier so you don't have to climb in the bed once you have a load on it. Over here is the business side. They give you a single interstate Series 24 battery. I really wish they would have give you a little larger battery. Um, it is a marine grade battery. It's a quality battery, no, no problem there. Okay. Here is the hydraulic uh, lift system and uh, electric motor. Here is the built-in charger, simply a little push button to show your battery status. Um, as far as the remote, uh, it has a very long cord. I didn't measure it. It's at least 10 feet. You can definitely get out and see the back end of it. It's nice that it's magnetic. You can stick it to the side. Simple up-down operation. Uh, what's nice about this is if these things tend to fall and get pinched somewhere and it happens to hit that up button while you're driving, yeah, that does not go well. All of a sudden, bridges become an issue and you do not want to create a disaster and rip up your trailer by that thing getting pinched and squashed somewhere. The lid itself is sitting on uh, hydraulic supports on both sides. That was a nice touch. Has a handle, mechanism, can lock to protect your battery somewhat. Um, the jacks themselves, these are not bulldog jacks. I think they're RAM. Uh, let's look inside and I'll show you that. They are uh, a 12,000 pound support jack. Yeah, here they are. They're RAM. A 12,000 pound support, 10,000 pound lift. But 10,000 times two will actually give you a 20,000 pound lift. And that's just on the jacks, not with supporting on the trailer. So you should have no issue at all picking this thing up with a full load on it. Okay. Let's walk around and uh, look at these uh, lower supports. These are sprung. You simply just pull the handle and use your foot to push those things down. That'll limit the amount of cranking. Uh, the crank handle on the two landing gear uh, works very well. I do have an issue with it and we'll come up with that later. It's basically a conflict between these two handles. Uh, again, this trailer does come standard equipment with the tarp, the roller system, the spare tarp. Um, a lot of times the, this is not included, the spare tire is not included. So you got to look at five, six hundred dollars at least for those options. Okay, uh, nice step up. Again, all these lights are LED and they're all recessed, so you tend to bump into things. They typically won't break. This is a 24 inch side, which is standard on this model. It does have uh, post stake holes along, it also has tarp pull downs. Okay. Reflective. There's four along this side along the 16 foot. Fenders are 12 gauge diamond plate. And they don't quite cover the tires, but that should be legal in most plates. So it shouldn't, most states, it shouldn't be a problem slinging mud along the side. Okay, I'm looking around again at the back. Again, they have these nice tube extensions for the clearance lights, and again, they are recessed. Again, here's the combination gate. It's a two way gate. So we open it up with the barn doors by this handle here, okay? And then we have the spreader gate option by this handle here. Again, uh, just have a little bit of a complaint about this having difficulty latching. I do understand it is brand new, but right now, in order to get that thing down, you got to tap it with a hammer to get that gate to lock. So uh, inside, a very, very uh, roomy box. Um, the reason I bought the 16 foot, again, I didn't need that capacity for hauling. You're not going to fill this thing up for gravel and actually um, uh, be able to pull it around. Uh, right now, with it rated at uh, 15,680 uh, pounds and the trailer weighing about 5,000 pounds, you'd have about a 10,500 pound payload. So that'd be five and a quarter tons. So if you filled this up with gravel, you'd have a lot more in it than that. But it does have the 24 inch sides. This is the uh, 10 gauge uh, steel. Uh, it's really nice. They have this corrugation to it. 
to give it more vertical stiffness. Uh, this top rail is two and a quarter inches and um, single seam on the floor, again supported by that beautiful box substructure that we saw. Um, it's nice that the seam is in line, so when things pour off, it doesn't get caught on the cross seam. Okay. Here we're looking at the gates. Again, underneath our clearance lights are all recessed into tube. Uh, here we have these uh, little hatch doors <coughs> with the uh, the two little rings to keep them shut. You simply pull the rings out, slide the gate back, and hook it right up. No carrying them around the side, no carrying them around the front. It's a great location for them, easy access. And eh, when you get older and you're lifting heavy things, it's really nice to have things that are thought out well. They are thought out well. Okay. Here's the other side of the spreader gates. And this is a catch I'll talk more about later. When you open it, this pin simply spring loads into this hole to keep these gates open. As you know, one of the critical things on this trailer when you're dumping it, and one of the most common problems, is when people dump the trailer and the gates, the, the uh, barn door gate, is not locked up. So as the trailer tips up, those doors will hit the ground and it'll simply crunch both of these hinges. Sometimes it'll even crumple that gate. That is a common problem with these trailers. It's uh, easily preventable, but on this off side, it's really hard to see when you're dumping the trailer and standing over there. So although this is a neat and slick system that you can automatically clip it open, I don't trust it. Uh, as many people like to do belt and suspenders, you can add your bungee cord to it. I have a proposed mod modification that I'll show you in the second part of this video. Okay, continuing to walk around. Plenty of travel between the tires and the fender well. <clears throat> Again, uh, all these have a step up on both sides, which is really nice. And uh, here's a look at the area where we have the end of the bed and the uh, tarp roll and uh, left plenty of room there. So nicely done, guys. And uh, a little bit of decorative up there on the gooseneck. My wife calls it the barbed wire. Have a little pride with it. That's nice. Um, the hookup themselves, as they mentioned in some of the other videos, are these uh, heavy duty seven way plugs with uh, connectors on both sides. For me, I've never had a problem with the connector on one side, and these are a lot harder to push on, but they may have an advantage. So, that is the general. Next, let's look at the couple of problems that I. Okay, so things I didn't like. Number one, it's right here. The conflict of these two handles. I'll show you the detail on that. Number two, the manufacturing on the spreader gate latch. Right now it won't lash unless I beat it with a hammer, and that isn't the way it should happen. Okay. Number three, it's these barn door catches. Again, uh, these doors are critical, as I mentioned before, and the catch is barely making it, and I'll show you more detail on that. Okay. Uh, a couple of the other things. A few of the welds were misses. Yeah, I know I'm nitpicking on this. Um, I am a welder. Uh, I'm not a professional oil-filled welder, but I've spent a lot of time behind the make. So, for me, this weld's embarrassing. <laughs> The reason I caught it right away, you can still see some of the string there because I cut myself open on that. Uh, look at the splatter. It is a critical weld. This is basically where the sides meet the front of it. And uh, a lot of the welds are good, but yeah, swing and a miss on that one, guys. Sorry. And my issue with that is quality control should be um, More than the welder, yeah, I understand these guys are having uh, a lot of work to do and sometimes push pretty hard to get the product out. So let's get into the details of the things I don't like with a little bit more clarity. Okay, here we are looking at uh, one of the problems with this brand new uh, PJ Gooseneck dump trailer. It's the setup here between the crank handle that controls the landing gear and the crank handle which retracts the tarp. Um, this is poorly done. I really can't believe they just let this go. I saw another uh, person comment on this, but here's a great example of it. So. This handle, of course, retracts the tarp. It is a rollout handle, so you can do that. But even with it completely in, and even if it was in a different position, the problem is this shaft right here. 
you can see there's quite a bit of room here uh, maybe about three inches extra that's not really needed so we'll take the crank handle if it was in line okay now you can wobble it out and get around it okay but that makes it kind of hard to crank wobbling it around now what should happen to the shaft is you should push it in and lock it just like on the semi landing gear so it should be locked the bolt should be locked into this that way this tube fits into this hole here and it's locked it's solid so when you go to crank it it's not wobbling all over the place okay so easy remedy uh, this could have been cut down and moved in quite a bit missing those two inches which seem to be the critical two inches or this could have been extended out now there's no problem with it standing out past the side of the vehicle obviously we have other things handle out of the way other things that are quite a bit wider so this even being two inches longer out to here would have fixed it in this being shorter in fact the best way would have been both extend this two inches bring that back two inches plenty of clearance to lock the handle and be able to crank it up poorly done guys yeah no excuse for that Gay dump trailer, never been used. Okay, so it's a combination gate. You can use it as a spreader gate or you can open it as a standard gate for loading equipment. But this bottom lug was off a little bit and it will not actually lock. So brand new, bringing it over. Uh, I stopped one time and looked and the gate was undone. Now, lucky I wasn't hauling anything. Um, Here's the other side of it. That bar extends through, and you can see it's simply not going to catch. So a person could take their grinder and grind a little material off this. This is quite thick, so we can lose a little bit of material here. I'd hate to pull it out of here, because that would make that super thin. But I shouldn't have to modify that. It looks like the whole thing, even with the gate pushed in as far as it'll go, Sorry, I'm trying to do two things at once. As far as it'll go, it will not quite pop into there. So the gate is basically partially open. Same thing here. Even with this, you can see the small gap here. Even with it sucked together, there's no way that this is going to actually lock. Maybe if I beat it with a hammer, but I don't think it will. Okay, one more problem I found, which is an error in the manufacturing process, is the latches that hold these barn doors open when you're dumping with the barn doors open. Um, this is critical, because you have to understand, once these barn doors open and lock, should they come unhinged while the bed is tilting up, they will actually catch the ground, bend, destroy the door, destroy the handle. This is a really common problem. I've seen this, been around these trailers a lot seeing the rentals come in completely destroyed like that so let me demonstrate what the problem is okay so unlatching it they had come up with this latch system i'm much in favor of a hard tieback anyway you can see right here where this pin was pushed down and it latches okay but if you look at the clearance here okay looking over the top of it the pin doesn't even extend it's barely catching in here so even the slightest bump or the slightest jar, this door is going to swing free, okay, while you're dumping. And if it catches on the ground, bends your hinge, bends the door, destroys it. Trailers are never the same after this happens. So very simply put, although I don't love that design, if this plate was mounted a little bit lower, you can see all the room in here, and this is tapered to catch that pin, it should have been dropped a half inch down and it could have locked in. So you would have had at least the pin actually extending through the hole. If you look at this side, it was done a little bit better. Still a little iffy, but we do actually have pin clearance through the hole. Poorly done. Again, that's a setting for disaster there. Uh, I always recommend uh, belt and suspenders. If you only have these catches, tie it back with a bungee, do something. So that's the issues that I see with the trailer. Again, some of them may be minor. Is anything going to result in a catastrophic failure? No, the trailer is well built. I might be nitpicking a little bit, but isn't that what you want me to do? Anyway, I'd like to state at this time that this is my own review. Uh, no one is paying me. I get no endorsements. I get no goods. I get no materials. I get no attaboys. The only thing I get is comments below. So this is 
simply me on this particular unit only and the way I see it. Um, again, I have a couple of planned modifications to this that might interest you. I'm going to do a quick review on those and then later in the second video I'll show you how they were implemented. Okay, so modification one, I am actually going to put a top board along here. The reason is Basically, some people are not that good with a loader, and I would rather chip that board and dent this top rail to reduce the value of my trailer. It also will give you, uh, I'm using a 2x6, so we think roughly we'll get an extra 6 inches of capacity along the side. Not needed if you're hauling gravel or sand, if you're hauling manure, or if you're hauling junk metal. It's nice to have that little bit of extra room in there. Okay, so my first one is that, and uh, you can see about the materials over here. Uh, all right, to install. We're going to get on that after this video. Okay. Uh, the next thing I plan to do is on the gates, actually add a hard tie down. I'm going to actually purchase the hardware already for it. It's simply going to be a chain and a clip, and I'll show you how I do that on the next video. I really want a belt suspenders here. These things, uh, it's one of the weak points. Should those barn door gates pop open as you're dumping and they catch the ground, you're going to destroy the gate and rip up the back of the trailer. It'll never close right. It'll never be right again. I've seen it happen so many times. It's a common error, these things, and you really have to be careful. If you don't want to add a chain, I suggest having a bungee backup or something like that. The other modifications are totally of my choice. Um, I've been out on job sites. Usually these batteries, as again, this is a Series 24 new battery. You might get six dumps out of it. I don't know, brand new, I'll try. Between four and eight. So if you have more dumps than that per day, and you get to a site and you got a load on, and you can't get the load off, nothing more frustrating than that. Your jumper cables won't reach it. You gotta disconnect the truck or bring somebody else up to jump the battery to get your load on. So in here is my plan for one. I'm going to pull out the single battery and I'm going to put a dual set of batteries. I'm going to add a battery switch so I can deplete one battery, switch to the second and have control over that without running my batteries down. I'm also going to add a solar charger. The problem with the solar chargers on a lot of these, especially the uh, bumper pull versions, is where do you put them? Uh, you can hide them over here where they won't get hit by debris when you're loading it up. But the gooseneck has this beautiful top area right here. Um, I had already purchased online a 100 watt panel and a charge controller, which will give it about, you know, three or four amps of trickle while you're charging it. Of course, that charge controller is critical to make sure you're not going to overcharge those batteries. So that's the modifications I plan to make along the way. And we'll have a second video on it. All right, it's getting late here in Southern Utah and I want to close this up. Um, just a couple of comments. First of all, None of these things that I brought up are critical. They're not life-threatening. It's not going to create a catastrophic failure, except for possibly the door getting crunched. Um, I know that manufacturing in the United States is difficult, and I'm here to purchase U.S. goods. Um, I know that getting supplies right now are difficult. Getting steel, especially U.S. steel, like you guys use, is, is difficult. Also, um, labor. Whew. After uh, COVID, a lot of people moved on. A lot of people were laid off. They didn't want to go back to work when they changed your profession. So you may have a lot of new staff on site. But I do fault is the QAQC process, that they should have actually looked a little tighter before this thing got out the door, inspected a couple of things, caught them, sent it back, and had them just reworked a little bit. So that would be my major issue. Um, there's also prices are going up all the time. We see a little bit of inflation. And we see the press of course, affecting the delivery cost to us out here in the West. So everything costs a little bit more. So with that said, I'd like to give a shout out to the dealership of Soul Minas. That would be a Murdoch trailer sales in Loveland, Colorado. Um, my uh, representative that I worked with was Stephen. He's great. I mean, I've never purchased a big ticket item sight unseen online with a couple of phone conversations. He reassured me. Every time he ran a credit card, he sent me the receipts, the invoices, the title, everything. So really made me comfortable with it. When I showed up, they put a lot of work into it. I know oh, there's got to be tires mounted and fluids added and this and that. 
they had literally got it late on a Friday, and I picked it up on a Monday, and it was ready to go. So the dealership itself, man, I tell you what, I would uh, definitely go back again. Murdoch Trailer Sales, Loveland, Colorado, great folks just south there off right of I-25. Um, besides that, <clears throat> I am really excited about finally having a trailer. It'll save me a bunch of back brake labor, shoveling off, shoveling on. Uh, something that I can use and turn with my tractor to move the materials that I need to move. Uh, everything from dirt to manure to hay. So, and haul that tractor itself. So again, this is Stephen Utah. Thanks so much for watching. I do appreciate your support. And from evening in southern Utah, we're signing off.